Hello everyone, it's Chris Pritt, back again with a new topic in West Virginia divorce. Today, we're gonna to be talking about settlement agreements on the date of a contested hearing. Sometimes what will happen in, in cases is you're not able to get the case resolved for various reasons. It could be you just don't see eye to eye. It, you could, it could be because um, there, are a, there are a plethora of reasons why you might not be able to sell. But oftentimes what will happen is you'll get to court and the people who are involved in a divorce will want to get the case over, over with and they don't want to necessarily take a chance by presenting the case to the judge because there are certainly issues sometimes and reasons why you would not want to present the case to the judge and to come to an agreement. One of the key things about coming to an agreement is, and I don't, by the way, I don't endorse it in all instances, but sometimes it's in your best interest. But one of the things that you can do in terms of coming to an agreement, one of the reasons for it, is that by coming to an agreement, you can minimize the risks that are gonna be involved in the case. That's one of the critical reasons why you might wanna to come to an agreement. Oftentimes, what will happen is that um, if, if you come to an agreement at the hearing, the court will make a number of inquiries about the nature of the agreement uh, that um, that will actually happen. So for example, um, you get to the hearing, it's, it's set for a contested hearing and you're able to resolve the case. That could be on the part of the petitioner, uh, that could be on the part of the respondent, that could be the attorneys working together, but sometimes you can wrap it up and resolve it at the hearing. Now what'll happen then is you'll, you'll typically go in front of the judge and you'll put the agreement on the record. What that means is the attorneys will discuss openly the, uh, the agreement and it will be discussed on the record. And there are a number of questions questions that will be asked by the people involved in the divorce. Some, some basic questions, for example, such as, um, do you agree with this agreement? Are you under any kind of duress or coercion? Did you enter into the agreement freely and voluntarily? Are, your, are you on any kind of medications that would affect your ability to understand the agreement? Um, are, were there any side deals that are not covered in this agreement? Those are some basic questions that the court will inquire of the people who are involved in a divorce action. And you, um, you present it like that, and then once you present that, the, the court will have to make a decision as to whether to approve the agreement or not approve it. I can tell you that in most instances, the courts will approve it unless it's something really outrageous. But that's what you'll do is you'll, you'll try to present uh, come to an agreement sometimes at the hearing, the date of the hearing prior to going in, and most of the time um, the courts will accept the agreement. So the, the question was, can you come to an agreement on the date of the, the hearing, the you know the final hearing, or even sometimes the temporary hearing? And the answer to that is yes. It is still possible though. It's usually in your best interest to prepare as if you're going to have a contested hearing, okay? Because nothing is ever certain. That consists of today's video. If you have any questions at all for me, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Have a good day.